You boys be quiet down there! This time we're looking at NGH003, Top Players Golf, 1990 from SNK. For six years, this was the only golf game on the Neo Geo. However, since then, it has been largely forgotten and overshadowed by a certain game, which shall not be named. For if it was, the sheer power of the game would eclipse this entire review. Go on, get out of here. We're not talking about you today. You already get all the attention as it is. The graphics may be simple, but they do have a certain charm. Aren't these menus relaxing? We can choose from stroke play, match play, and a Nassau game. Whatever the hell that is. We only have two courses to choose from, but being an early title at 62 megs, most of that is voices, two courses is plenty to keep us entertained. Hmm, do I need a caddy? I guess so. This is my first time playing this in a long time, so I'll need all the help I can get. Left side of fairway is <laughs> what? Of river on right. Good lord, who recorded this? Right Am I supposed to be taking this seriously? For this review, I'm playing on my MVS cart. I must admit that before playing Top Players Golf for this review, I had never given the game much of a chance. I've had this game in my collection for many years, but I played that other game first. Go away. So when I tried Top Players Golf, I mostly noticed what it was lacking rather than what it had to offer. And here's the most glaring thing I noticed years ago when I first tried to play this. The game shows you how far it is from the tee to the hole, but after you've teed off it doesn't show you the distance remaining to the hole. You can see how far each club is estimated to take the ball before you hit, but without knowing the distance to the hole, how can you know which club to select? This was the biggest challenge when I first played Top Players Golf, and something I was unable to wrap my head around at the time. This flew in the face of how I'd played every golf game before that. I needed to know the distance remaining to the hole in order to know which club to select. Well, if I had simply asked the caddy for help, I would have found out that it shows you how far you have left here. Too bad I didn't know that. What's with this evil two-player version of the caddy with that tooth? I never noticed this information the caddy provides, and I think I grew frustrated quickly. I must not have been willing to put in the effort back then. The game always starts on the club that your caddy is recommending for each shot anyway. That means that whichever club is initially selected is the club that will take you the remaining distance to the hole, if hit with a full swing. You can also check the map and eyeball the fraction of the distance remaining to the hole. Knowing which club you use to get your ball here, you can extrapolate which club you should use to get your ball the rest of the way to the hole. As you become more familiar with the game, you will learn when to use a stronger or weaker club than what the game is suggesting. Seeing the actual distance remaining is actually not even that useful or important in this game, so I usually don't even bother to check. There are also other factors to consider, what kind of surface your ball is on, and the wind. As in any golf game, the wind is a very powerful force that needs to be considered when setting up your shot. Fortunately, the game clearly displays the wind's direction and speed. There are bunkers on both sides of fairway. What's with the caddy's oddly realistic face? Was this done by the same artist as the sign ladies in Baseball Stars Professional? Actually, it probably was the same artist. So it actually wasn't that hard to overcome the problem of what the game wasn't telling me. In fact, I'm going to show you exactly how to play this game. At the start of each hole, change the view to the full map view. This will give you a clear view of the safest route to take. Line up your shot in the direction you'd like. Then notice the wind direction. In general, to compensate for the wind, you will want to adjust the same number of clicks in the opposite direction of the arrow as the number displayed. You'll want to do exactly this number, maybe even one extra click, if the wind direction is showing straight left or right. If the arrow is shown at an angle, then you'll want to adjust the same number of clicks, perhaps one or two less if the number is high. On most holes, your driver will already be selected, so you can go ahead and hit at full power. If it's a par 3, the game will start you on a better club for the hole. Now on to the second shot, or the first shot in the case of a par 3. 
If the wind is against you, you'll want to adjust by hitting with a club one step stronger than what the game is recommending. You'll want to go two steps stronger if the wind is strong. The wind really is a huge factor in this game. Also consider the surface you're hitting from. If you're on the fairway, you're good to go. But if you're in the rough or a bunker, then you may want to up the power, especially if you still have a significant distance remaining to the hole. Take my advice if you dare, or make your own choice. It's up to you. If you're almost there, just stick with the sand wedge. It will get the job done. One thing that's nice about this game is that it really doesn't matter very much which club you use for each surface. Unlike that other game, whose name is still not being mentioned, beat it, you're too expensive. You can use your driver from the rough, for example, if you want, and it will work. Again, don't forget to factor in the wind. Even with a shorter distance to the hole, the wind still is a huge factor, especially when using these clubs that hit the ball at a steeper angle. The sand wedge is another part of this game that you'll need to familiarize yourself with if you want to get better. That's because as your weakest club, excluding the putter of course, the game will always select the sand wedge when there's about 100 yards or less remaining to the hole. This makes it difficult to know how strongly to swing, so you'll have to get used to about how far the sand wedge can take the ball, and then adjust the power of your swing for the remaining distance. This is a very imprecise proposition, considering the game's power gauge that you have to use for your swing. Slow down! That's not when I hit the button! Where am I supposed to choose? The power gauge ends here, and then this whole area is slice! Nice one! <laughs> it's interesting that the English voice happens to say nice one when you land on the green. In Japan, nice on is the phrase used in golf when you've landed on the green below par. In fact, nice on is the title of a golf game released for Wonderswan, named for that phrase. It's very likely that the voice actor was asked to record the phrase nice on for this purpose, but the voice actor corrected it, probably assuming it was a mistake. At least this way it works for Japanese and international audiences, and the Japanese audience probably didn't mind the difference too much. Damn, holy crap, what did you do? Can't you take a hint? Get out of here! You're NGH number 200. We've got a long way to go before we get to you. Top Players Golf, are you okay? That other game is just a big bully. Now that you're on the green, it's time to get out your putter. Sometimes I putt if I'm in the rough right on the edge of the green, but be careful. If you've got much distance at all to go before you're on the green, the ball probably won't roll, so you're better off just chipping with the sand wedge at the lowest possible power. Now putting is one place where, in my opinion, Top Players Golf has that other game beat. Putting couldn't be simpler in Top Players Golf. The slope of the green is very easy to read, and the hole is huge. Look how easily I've gotten lucky and sunk the ball from off the green on several occasions. The most difficult part to contend with is again the imprecise power gauge and the speed at which the gauge moves. It could be said that putting is too simple in this game, but that is really for the best. Imprecise putting is a major frustration in other golf games, so keeping it simple is definitely the way to go for a simple arcade game like this. Drive the ball to the right side because at the left is the C, but watch out for right bunkers. <laughs> yeah, this does look tough. Thanks for the help. It's not all rainbows and butterflies though. Like all golf games, things can get tough if it doesn't go your way. Fortunately, you can improve with practice. Damn! Water hazard. One stroke penalty. No, 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 no! Out of bound. One stroke penalty.
Well, I guess it is cool the way they made the ball bounce realistically off the rocks like that. Now let's figure out what a Nassau game is. Basically, this is how you play match play with wacky rules. There are bonus points awarded on certain holes for extra challenges such as closest to the pin or a longest drive contest. Also, if one player is pulling ahead of the other in score, then you can choose to bet it all on one hole. If the leading player wins, it's over, but if the underdog wins, then the score resets and play continues. So like match play, you need two players for a NASA game. In top players golf, you can choose a human or AI opponent. The music is really nothing special, but it will stick with you after you turn the game off. <laughs> Dung 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 of Christmas is long long ago. The music is mostly PSG sound, with samples only being used for percussion. In other words, the music sounds kind of, though not exactly, like Sega Mega Drive music. Now that I've put in the very small amount of effort needed to learn how to play top players golf, has my opinion changed? Well, hell yes! Once I got going, I really had a lot of fun with this game. The competition is a lot of fun for two players, and the two courses vary enough to keep things interesting. The music and scenery don't change between the two courses, but they do provide a variety of challenges. Previously, I had always accepted what seems to be the conventional wisdom, that that newer game, whose name shall not be spoken, is the last word in Neo Geo Golf, period, and top players golf should be relegated to a footnote in Neo Geo history. For me, I always accepted that as gospel fact, all because top players golf is a little rough around the edges, and I didn't know how far I have remaining to the hole, so I couldn't figure out how to play it. Today, I must admit that I was wrong. Considering that the other game has the benefit of being six years newer, top players golf deserves a lot of credit. In fact, I checked out an FAQ by Devin Morgan, and he thinks that top players golf is the best golf game on the Neo Geo. No joke! Blasphemy! Now let's take a look at the Neo Geo CD version of the game and see how that fared. I want to show you the experience of playing this on a real Neo Geo CD system, should you choose to play the game this way. What the hell? An arranged soundtrack? This is definitely unexpected for such an early title. It's odd that we've run into an arranged soundtrack at number 003 in the list of Neo Geo games. It'll be a long time before we hear another arranged soundtrack for a Neo Geo CD game in my review series. For those who may not know, the Neo Geo CD system was released four years after the original Neo Geo cartridge system. With all of the same hardware capabilities, except for the CD drive of course, it was very easy to port the existing Neo Geo library to the Neo Geo CD, if you can even call it porting. The Neo Geo CD was able to execute the same code as the cartridge system, but the code had to be loaded off the CD into the system's RAM before it could be executed. This made it easy for SNK and other publishers to release a huge library of existing titles to the new Neo Geo CD system in a short time offering the previously expensive cartridge games at an affordable $50 to $60 per CD price point, more palatable to mainstream consumers. In order to release this large back catalog in a short amount of time, corners had to be cut. For earlier games, rather than bothering to record arranged versions of the game's soundtracks to take advantage of the CD audio capabilities of the system, they simply recorded the existing music from the cartridge version of the game onto CD audio tracks. Even though the Neo Geo CD's sound chip was capable of playing these original soundtracks on its own, playing the music from the CD instead saved on audio RAM and load time, which were at a premium on the Neo Geo CD. 
So most of the early games for the Neo Geo CD do not have arranged soundtracks. Arranged meaning different from the original cartridge version of the music. However, as new games were released for the system, such as King of Fighters 94 or very popular previously released games such as Samurai Showdown 1, SNK and other publishers composed arranged soundtracks for the Neo Geo CD versions of the titles. These arranged CD soundtracks became famous for their high quality, with higher fidelity than their cartridge counterparts, and often making use of real, live performed instruments. The arranged soundtracks are still a huge selling point for the Neo Geo CD system among collectors. That's why it's a shame that many earlier titles for the system don't have them. Although I personally grew up with many of these arranged soundtracks and I love them very much, I will admit that I have now come to appreciate the cartridge music more. Any CD-based game system can play high-quality music, but it takes skill to create good music from a console's internal synthesizer. The quality of the arranged tracks in Top Player's Golf is not bad. Ah, I love that smooth 90s synth. Saxophone, what is this? KOF? The sound quality of the caddies' voices is vastly improved for the CD version, but this was not accomplished in the way that you would expect. This is a double dog leg hole. Then it's easier to aim for green on the second shot. Keep drive on right side of the fairway by using a fade. The obvious way to make the sound quality better would be to use CD audio tracks at the beginning of each hole, but this is not what they did. The voices are nowhere to be found on the CD's audio track list and you can hear the delay before the music starts when the music track is being accessed. Left side of fairway is safer because of river on right. But try to keep the ball on right side of fairway for easier second shot to green. So the music is what's being played from the CD, not the voices. It seems that they've actually loaded the caddies' voices into memory, but they didn't just use the voice samples from the cartridge version like you would expect. They've actually gone back to the original recordings and used a higher sampling rate and or better audio compression to greatly improve the sound quality. Again, as was the case with NAM 1975, it's good to see that they have retained the original voice recordings from 1990. The Neo Geo CD only has one megabyte of audio memory, that's 8 megabits, so given the simplicity of this early vintage game, it's safe to assume that these voices were the major memory hurdle in the CD version of this game. In fact, the game loads one more time before the back nine holes, and I assume the main, if not only thing being loaded, is the caddy's speech. This is a hole where the fairway is split into two. The left fairway seems safer. Which are you going to take? Unfortunately, all of this comes at a price. Top Player's Golf has been modified for the CD version a lot more than other early Neo Geo CD games, which is why I'm spending so much time talking about it. Most of the voices from the end of the hole, from when you land on the green to when you sink the putt, are missing. It's like there wasn't enough audio memory left over, so they removed the voices. More glaringly, all of the music changes from the cartridge version are missing. The cartridge version plays music for making it to the green under par. Nice one. Then the background music goes off while putting to help you concentrate and the caddy explains the slope of the green. Green slopes straight uphill. Music and voices play when the hole is completed. Putt for par. Nice par. The CD version doesn't do this. 
Instead, they've opted to keep the music track playing for the entirety of the whole, which makes sense. As discussed in the previous video, changing music on the Neo Geo CD causes access time. The amount of access time would have been huge if they'd kept all of these music changes from the cartridge version. It would have been too annoying. And you wouldn't have been able to enjoy the arranged music as well. But the missing music for finishing the hole is very noticeable. It just feels weird, especially if you're used to the cartridge. So there are some major trade-offs here in the CD version for sure, but it is still worth checking out for the arranged soundtrack, which isn't bad. This hole is a dog leg toward the left. Use safe tactics to keep in the center of the fairway to avoid bunkers on the left. Oh, that's very good advice. You really know what you're talking about, Caddy. Respect. Now that I've put the time in, I've done a 180 on this game. I used to write it off as an inferior golf game for the console. Now I've realized that top player's golf is worth a look. With challenging gameplay that rewards effort and brutally punishes mistakes, just like real golf, there is a lot of fun to be had here for one or two players. Plus, top player's golf is inexpensive compared to that other game, which is ludicrously priced on the home system. With only two golf games available on Neo Geo, there is definitely room for both. Isn't that right? Yeah, I see you over there. Ah, come here you. Come home to daddy. We'll get to you soon enough. And it's going to be worth the wait. Thank you for watching this Neo Geo review. Next week we're talking about NGH004 Mahjong Kyo Retsuden. Yes, it's a Japan-only Mahjong title that has mostly been ignored by Western gamers. But we're going to briefly take a look and see what we can learn from it. You're going to want to make sure to subscribe to Basement Brothers and join me next time.